everyone welcome back to my youtube channel M Graham Sews. this video tutorial is for this really pretty bag called the summer's crossbody by hills handmade this bag comes in two sizes so there's a choice between a small and the large this is the large bag the size that i'm going to show you in the tutorial all the steps are the same no matter what size you're making so you just want to make sure you make note of the size you're making because as you go through the pattern there's different measurements or sometimes different sizes for pattern pieces to cut so you do need to make note of that when you're making your bag a couple of things before i continue on with explaining the bag I film all my tutorials like a sew along so that means I don't fast forward the parts where I'm sewing or I'm clipping. I walk you through all the steps and this is so that anybody who doesn't know how to sew a bag, maybe it's their first time, they have a chance to follow along with me and if they fall a little bit behind they can easily catch up in those parts where I'm sewing. However, steps where we sew say maybe multiples of things so these accents i show you how to make the one the first one so how to sew it to the bag then i go off camera and i sew the remaining three pieces because i feel you don't need to sit and watch me sew all four that just makes the tutorial a little bit longer another thing to note is that i don't give any pattern pieces pattern measurements show pattern pieces no rulers no cutting mats nothing on my table while i am sewing and this is for the protection of the designer, but also because oftentimes I film tutorials while these bags are in testing and things can change. So measurements can change, placements can change. And this way here, if I don't give you measurements, there's no confusion. So you need to follow along with your pattern either printed beside you or open on your screen so that you can scroll through it and all you'll do is just minimize this video screen and have the other screen open with your pattern so that you can still scroll through. So let's discuss some of the features of the Summer's Crossbody Bag. So first it has this strap which is adjustable so you can wear this bag crossbody or on your shoulder. On the front there is a flap with a magnetic snap so it snaps back closed with the magnetic snap. And at the top here, if you follow the instructions, and I do walk you through, there is a little name label that could go here. I didn't do it because I don't have the tag, but there is a tag. And then on the back, there's no pocket. You could, if you want, add that front pocket here, this slip pocket to the back, or add a zipper pocket to the back. And the zipper pocket, you would use the same instructions as the one that's on the inside. You have the accents on the bottom. And then as I was mentioning, inside there's a zipper pocket, so you could take this instruction and you can put it on the back of your bag if you want to have a zipper pocket on the exterior. And then on the lining, there's also another slip pocket. And this bag really will fit everything you need for a day out. So as you can see, my water bottle, if I put it in on an angle, does fit in there. And that's one of these, um, totally forgot what it's called, these Yetis. So it's a big, heavy, water bottle and it does fit in and I'd be able to put my wallet in beside and I'd be able to put my phone in here my keys would fit in there and maybe even my sunglasses if I wanted to have it so that the water bottle was standing up I would just put it like that but if you had like one of those disposable ones or a smaller water bottle this would definitely fit inside the large this is a great bag for if you're a traveler or if you're out on walks a lot with the nicer weather where I live it's getting to be nicer weather soon hopefully so I'm going to be looking at having bags that I can just take when I go out with my husband on our walks. So something that I can just put in the basket of my scooter and it doesn't take up a lot of space. I just want to have essentials with me. This is great for that. But if you travel, it's great because you can put your passports in here, your water, uh, you know, a device so a tablet or anything you need. And then you're set to go for a day out hiking around, going and seeing all the beautiful places. So again, this is the summer crossbody bag. I'm going to walk you through all the steps of making this bag. So let's get started. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is important because it familiarizes you with the construction of the bag, but it's also important because oftentimes designers will give information regarding different interfacings to use or maybe different materials. And sometimes you have to cut things different because of the materials you're using. So you'll want to read through the pattern first to check over that and make note of it before you start cutting your fabrics. Once you've read through the pattern, you can go ahead and print all the pattern pieces and then cut them out. And then you can cut out your pattern pieces out of the materials you have chosen. 
For this tutorial, I am using quilting cotton as well as fusible fleece. And I'm not making my strap out of webbing. Instead, I've made my strap so that it matches my bag. So I've used a faux leather on one side and I've used the quilting cotton to match my exterior fabrics for the other side. I have a tutorial which I will link below in the description for how to make a strap when a pattern calls for webbing and also for how to make a double sided strap and also how to finish your strap so that you get these nice clean edges. So I will link those three tutorials below in the description for you. Always check the descriptions of my videos because there's lots of information given there like the machine I use, materials, where you can find them and also some extra helpful tutorials that will help you for making your bag. Sometimes I post the tutorial for how to add a zipper to a zipper tape so I will also post that below because I've already gone ahead and added my pulse to my zipper tapes and I've cut them to length. Now because I've gone ahead and read all the pattern I have also made some markings that needed to be made such as this one for my zipper pocket I've made the little rectangular box I've also marked the middles and the tops of all my pattern pieces so here you go right here you'll see that it shows a T that's for the top here and I've also labeled what the pattern pieces are so this is the interior zipper pocket piece so I've gone ahead and labeled that as well so once you have everything cut and you've gathered your hardware like this, I like to put it all in a little baggie so it keeps it all together and then I'm not searching for it after. And I just do that going based off the supply list and then I have everything all together, I'm ready to go. Once you have everything cut and marked, we're ready to go, we're ready to get started. So the first thing we're going to work on is our strap connectors. And to make these, you will have two pieces that will look like this. You will have them flat, you will draw a line up the center, so not on the long edge, on the short edge, so you're going on the short length, up the center you will draw a mark, or draw a line, sorry. You will then take your fabrics and press the raw edges into the center to meet, just like that, so they fold into that center line to meet. You will press it. Once you have that pressed, you will then fold them again and press it again. And I like to spritz this with a little bit of water just to really help give it a really nice press. So you'll spritz it if you want, or just press it. Now, if you're using a material that cannot be pressed with an iron, what you will do is draw that line down the center and put a piece of double-sided tape on both sides of the line. You'll still do the same thing, press those raw edges in to meet that center line, and then fold it again. So same thing, you're just not using an iron. Instead, you're using double-sided tape. Once you have these folded, both of them folded, you'll top stitch these long edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. trim all our threads because I'm all about not getting any peekaboo threads because sometimes those threads like to peek up through our seams after. So trim all your threads just like that. And these are done. We can set them to the side for now. So I'm just going to clip mine together and set them to the side. The next step is to mark the centers of all your pattern pieces. So again, back with my little pile, all our centers of our pattern pieces, I mark them at the top, the top and the bottom. I make the marks there. So go ahead and mark the centers of all your pattern pieces and if you haven't already too, you may want to mark where the top is just so you know which way these are going to be placed when we get to that step in the bag. Next, you need to take your zipper. Now, there are two sizes for this bag, so you'll want to pay attention to the instructions for the size of bag you're making. So there's a small and the large. For this tutorial, I am making the large, so I have to cut everything as per the large instructions. So there's 
of instruction for cutting your zipper tape for the size of bag that you're using, or you're making, sorry. And you'll want to cut your top zipper tape to that length. So again, I'm doing the large, so I've already cut my zipper tape to the length needed. And this is the tape here. Here is my zipper with the pull already installed. So now I'm going to make a mark, make a mark on the center of my zipper tab here. So I'm going to go make a mark on the center of the zipper tab and I will come right back and we will continue on. Now it's not really necessary to make the mark in the center, but I like to make that just to be able to get everything nicely lined up. Your zipper pull is closing to the left as per the instructions. I'm just going to put a little bit of double sided tape onto my little tab here just to help hold it in place. And I'm going to place the end of the zipper with that line at that line that I made and not right at the line because you want it to be about a sixteenth of an inch away because when you fold it over you want it to match up and if you go right at the line the sides here these side edges won't match up so you want to be about a sixteenth of an inch away from the center line and that'll help give that extra space for when you fold the tab over the zipper I'm going to use another piece of double sided tape just to help hold it in place. This will make sure nothing shifts on me while I'm sewing. And I'm just lining up the edges as I fold it over. So these side edges, making sure everything's all lined up when I fold it over. So it'll look just like that on both sides. And here, if I look on the side, this all lines up. So now we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And we're just sewing a little box all the way around. to cut my thread so there we have it we have our little zipper tab on the end of our zipper tape now we can take our zipper tape and you already have the pull installed so at the end opposite the zipper tab open the zipper tape up a little bit and there's a mark or a measurement for how far we're going to fold this. And I've already gone ahead and made that mark so I know where to pinch my zipper tape. And we're going to turn the ends of the zipper tape at a 90 degree angle. And again, there's another video tutorial I have on my YouTube channel. I'll link it below in the description. It goes into a little bit more detail about how to do this. But quickly what you do is pinch it at that mark and then you're going to turn the zipper tape or the teeth so that it is over top of where you just pinched. So there's the pinch mark. And then I'm going to turn this so the teeth line up with that pinch mark. So the where I've pinched is right underneath. That little folded edge that I've pinched is right underneath these zipper teeth. So pinch, just like that. So now it's folded and the teeth, if you see when we fold it, you're just folding it back onto itself. But then you bring the teeth here over. And it almost, if you look at the back, it forms like a triangle back here. I'm going to try to get a little bit closer. You get a little triangle back there. So that's how you know if you're doing it right. So you're just folding these at a 90 degree angle and then we're clipping it in place. So I'm going to add a pin to help hold it in place. And again, that tutorial on my YouTube channel goes into more detail. So I will link it below so you can just pause this video, open up the other one, give it a quick watch, and then come back and continue on. Oops. 
So now that they're both pinned, so you can see here they're pinned, and again on the back, it looks like there's a little triangle. So I'm going to baste these in place along the raw edge. And if you're worried about this showing later in your finished bag, it shouldn't because it is going to be in the seam allowance, but say you're worried that your stitching won't be perfectly straight, you can switch to a thread that will match your zipper tape and then nobody will ever see it. Now I leave my pin in, oops, I leave my pin in until I've stitched a little bit just to help hold everything in place. And because I'm leaving the pin in, I hand crank. So I've stitched a few stitches and then I'll just keep stitching back and forth. And my zipper sort of shifted a bit, so I'm just going to fix that again and stitch back over it. Didn't quite catch up at the top here. There we go. Trim all your threads and then repeat that for the second side. So I'm going to just hand crank over that needle. So that's how it'll look when it is complete. You'll have it stitched and then on the back. It won't look like this side where I've sort of goofed a little bit and it moved on me. So that's how to turn your ends at a 90 degree angle. Moving on, we are going to take the two, so put your zipper to the side. We're going to take the two front pockets. So you'll have a lining piece and an exterior piece. And I decided to do mine using the same material, so both my exterior fabric. And that's just a personal preference, but you may have cut one from the lining and one from the exterior fabric. You're going to take them, place the exterior right sides up and the lining right sides down. So they're pretty sides touching. Clip them together. And I'm very sorry, it might take a little bit longer because I am working with a sprained wrist here. So it's a little bit harder to open clips. So I do apologize for that. So what we're going to do is sew all the way across this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Then we're going to flip the pieces so they are right sides out and we're going to press the top edge. So what I like to do before I turn them is I like to press my edge and I can't do this with this roller. I'm going to have to go to my iron. I can't do that with the roller today. So what I like to do is press the top edge so I'll press this seam open just like that, 
and then I'll flip it and I'll line up the bottom edges and then I'll press again at the top here to press it. So I'm going to go to my iron, I'm going to go do that. I'm very sorry, I can't use my roller to do it like I normally would and using my nail isn't the same, giving me the exact same result that I would normally get. I can't really press very hard. Or maybe I did, hang on. No, I need to go press it with my iron. So I'm gonna go press this with my iron and then I will come back and we will continue with making our Summer's crossbody. So I have gone ahead and pressed this edge and I did as I mentioned, I pressed this seam open and then I put them wrong sides together and I pressed this top seam. And when I press the top seam, I like to spray it with a little bit of water. That just helps give it a nice crisp pressed edge. This is just a personal preference. It's not something you have to do. It's just something I do to help get a nice crisp pressed edge. Next, we need to top stitch this top seam using the seam allowance given in the pattern. Don't forget to return your stitch length after you top stitch back to the length you use for stitching. Trim all your threads so you have no peekaboo threads. And next, we're going to make a mark on the lining side. So find what your lining side is. So this one is going to be my lining. And you're going to measure and make a mark down from the top, so down from the top, but centered using the measurement given in the pattern. And I had already did that. I did this before we started and I made the mark on my lining side here. So we're installing the male half of the magnetic snap. And I also like to add a bit of interfacing behind my snap. So I'm just going to find my little scrap of interfacing. And you'll want to follow your manufacturer's instructions for installing your magnetic snap. But what I do for mine, if I can get them to stay apart, on my scrap piece of Peltex, you can also use Decoville Heavy, Decoville Light, Foam, you can use anything you want. I just draw where the prongs are over the mark that I made. So here I'm centering my washer over the mark that I made. Drawing the slits. Then with my seam ripper, I'm going to make a slit and I'm going to actually add a pin just because I'm a little bit nervous about my wrist and I don't have as much control as I usually would. So to put the pin in, what I do is I put it right at the top of the mark that I made for the first slit and then I put it into the next mark I made for the second slit. And what this is going to do, if you can see, is my pin is right here. So this is where my pin is. When I put my seam ripper in, it's only going to let me rip up as far as that pin is. I won't be able to go any further. And this is a good precautionary measure if you're worried about seam ripping and pushing too hard as I was for this fabric because, as I mentioned, because of my wrist, I don't have as much control as I usually do. So it's just a nice little precautionary measure. On the wrong side, if you're using a material that frays, you may want to apply a dab of seam sealant, so fray stop, fray check, anything that you use. Now we're going to take the prongs and push them through the slits we made. I'm going to add my piece of Peltex through those slits. And I'm just going to make sure it stays tucked under that seam. And then 
fold your prongs so that it closes on the snap. And I like to fold my prongs in. That's just a personal preference. Some people fold them out. Whatever you prefer. I just like to fold them in because I feel like it hugs the fabric and holds onto the fabric better. Now, as an extra step, I like to use some double-sided tape over the prongs. Making sure I don't put it over the seam or onto the other side of the fabric. You just really want it right over those prongs and that's it. And that helps prevent this, um, the prongs from rubbing through to the other side, the other material on the other side. But I find it also helps hold it like extra security so that it doesn't come undone. And there you have it. Your magnetic snap is installed. I don't know if you can, there you go. You can see it on the lining side of your pocket. Now we need to install the female half onto our exterior. So have it here. And that's why I marked on here what this one was going to have on it. So I've already gone ahead and made my mark. And again, pay attention to the size of bag you're making because there's a different measurement used for the snap depending on the size of bag you're using, you're making. So you, oops, you want to pay attention to that so that you don't measure wrong and use the measurement for the small size bag. And that just pulled on my thread and it's all undone. Not down here, thankfully it didn't come off my needle. There we go. So with our female half, we're going to repeat that, the magnetic snap is sticking to everything. We're going to repeat that same process for installing the male half, but this time with the female half. And I'm just getting a little scrap piece of Peltex. And again, all my tools using the washer and you can also just for extra measure take your pocket line up your bottom edges and just look and see if your snap lines up with that mark so here's my mark and the middle of my snap lines up with that mark so I know that that's good and that I've installed it properly taking my washer and I'm centering it at the mark I made. I'm just drawing the lines for the slits. And as you can see, it's not a very big scrap piece of interfacing, just enough to put behind the prongs or the uh, washer and again I'm just going to use a pin because I don't trust myself today Insert the prongs through the slits that you made. And again, always follow your manufacturer's instructions for this because you could be using a different snap than I am. I can't cut that one. I can't get this one cut.
All right. So insert your interfacing, then your washer, and fold your prongs. tape or duct tape I mean and if you don't have any duct tape you can use masking tape I've used that previously or some scrap interfacing so some woven interfacing over top however just be careful when you're ironing the woven interfacing over your snap you can demagnetize it so just go around the snap don't worry about having it um, adhere here, adhere to where the snap is. As long as it's around the snap, you're fine. You can also glue, use some glue and glue a piece of fabric there, foam, anything you want. And there we go. Our snap is installed. And if I snap them together, just like that, everything lines up nicely and neatly it's all lined up so now we need to place the pocket just like that on top and we're going to baste around the edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern so you want to get everything all nicely lined up so what i like to do is make sure my center points on my pocket are lined up with the center points on the main panel, get them all lined up, so pin it all the way across and then all the way up the side. Like that so now we're going to base down the side across the bottom and up the other side and what I like to do here is start in the center and you can use a longer stitch length for this if you prefer so start in the center and go up the one side starting back in the center and you may be wondering why I'm doing this and the reason is because oftentimes I find when I start at the top and I come down and back across the bottom and then back up this side the fabrics end up shifting so this just prevents the shifting when I start in the middle and work out And there you have it, your front pocket is installed. Now we need to take our accents and we need to place them at the corners. So I'll show you how to do one corner, then what I'll do is I'll go off camera and I will, sh I will stitch the other corners because I don't feel you need to watch me do all four. So what you're going to do is take this piece, this is your corner piece, 
and place it in the corner just like that. So the side edges, the straight edges, line up. And I'm going to use some double-sided tape to help hold it in place. You can use some clips or some pins if you want. Just be careful if you're pinning because this material here that doesn't fray isn't always good with pins. But if you're using a canvas or something, like a waxed canvas, you should be okay to use pins. I've used pins on wax canvas before. So I'm just going to use double-sided tape to, and placing it all around. And again, taking it so that this is the bottom here, my straight edges all line up. So you want those straight edges to line up. And if you can't get them to line up perfectly, don't worry too much. This will be in the seam allowance, so no one's going to see that. But there, get it all lined up all nicely, and then we're going to stitch along all three sides. I'm just readjusting. There we go. So stitching along all three sides. And I'm not going to use the stitch length I usually use for top stitching, but I'm going to use slightly longer than what I would usually use for stitching a bag together. And just take your time going around this curve. Now the trick for curves, if you're not super comfortable with them, is to take one stitch needle down, lift your presser foot up, pivot just slightly, take another stitch, and keep doing that. So needle down, press her foot up, pivot slightly, press her foot back down, take a stitch. And you can do that all the way around. And that's just if you're not comfortable sewing like I am here when it comes to sewing a curve. That's also really helpful when you're sewing a bag that has a really big curved base. It's very helpful to do it that way. So anything with curves, it's very helpful. Take one stitch at a time. So I'm going to cut my threads. And there we have it. We have one corner installed on the front of our bag. So I'm going to go and do that and repeat that for the other three corners. So line up the corners, doing that also on my back piece. So line up all the corners and then stitch them just as we did here. So up across the bottom, up around the curved edge and back down this side and don't forget to back stitch. So I'm going to go do that with the rest and come back and we will continue on. So I've gone ahead and I have attached all the little side accent pieces and again just as I mentioned before depending on the size of bag you're making these may be smaller if you're making the small so you'll want to pay attention when you're cutting those out as well and it does need to be cut from a raw edge fabric. You can use edge coat or some glue or anything you want on the edges I just left mine raw. So now those are attached. Your next step, which I'm not going to be doing because I don't have a bag tag to attach to my bag, is you would cut a piece of raw edge material so that it is slightly bigger than your bag tag and you will place this at the measurement given in the pattern. You'll sew the piece of non-fraying material down, then put your bag tag over it. I don't have any handmade labels or anything to put on this so I can't do that, I'm very sorry. So again, cut this to the size, the, sorry, the raw edge fabric, slightly bigger so that it is kind of like a, a frame when you put it on. So you'd have your raw edge material and then you'd be putting your bag tag over it. So it kind of frames it, it's really pretty. I wish I could do it, but I don't have any. So again, you'll cut that slightly bigger than your bag tag. You'll stitch it onto your bag at the measurement given in the pattern. And then you will put your bag tag in the center of that raw edge material. If you haven't already, go ahead and fuse your fleece 
to your main panel pieces. I like to do this before I get started just because I like having it so that my snaps or anything else is stitched right through it. It helps add um, some extra stability to help hold the fleece on because sometimes I find as I'm moving things around the fleece does come unfused a little bit and it also gives that extra bit of material that I'm going through when I'm attaching my snaps and my little accent pieces as well. So now that those are sewn we need to attach our strap connectors. First we need to place the D-ring on the strap connector. So what you'll do is you will take your strap connectors and you will fold them in half so the raw edges align and I just give it a little press with my hand or my fingers then slide your hardware into where that crease is add a clip at the end just like that to hold it in place you'll repeat that for the second one so crease it put the d-ring to that crease and now what we're going to do is we're going to baste across this short edge just to help hold it in place. I'm just trimming my threads. Now we need to take our main panel just going to clean up some of these clips first because I dumped out too many. We're going to take our main panel and you're placing it so it is pretty sides up and you want to place your connector on so that the D-ring is pointing in towards the middle of your fabric and there's a measurement in the pattern from the top down for where you're going to place this D-ring so place it at the mark and the measurement given for how far off the edge of the fabric it needs to be. So you'll want to pay attention to both of those. So from the edge down and how far the connector will hang off the edge. So it'll look like that. It'll hang off the edge if you can see how mine hangs off the edge. So add that to the, do that to the other side. So again, make the mark from the top down and it's better on this side. You can see it. I've made the mark on this side as well. So from the top down, there's a measurement given. You'll make that mark and then you'll place the top edge of your connector at that mark. and the connector has to hang off the edge of the panel so you'll have it looking like that and again the top edge of the connector is lined up with that line. We're going to base this in place over it a few times just to really help make sure that it's stuck good. We'll end up stitching over that a few times as well when we go to sew the exteriors together. Now on the back side of each exterior main there is a mark that you need to make from the bottom up and from the bottom corner up and the bottom corner to the center towards the center. So you'll need to make those marks and again pay attention to the size of bag you're making because there's different marks and measurements for the different sizes of bag. So again your mark will go from the bottom corner up and then the other mark will go from the bottom corner over towards the center. Then you'll take those two marks and you'll draw a line, a diagonal line that connects them together and they'll look just like that. And I've done that on my exterior and I had read ahead and before I had started and did the linings as well. But for now, you're just drawing those lines on your exteriors only. Next, we're going to take our two slip pockets. And that's these pieces here. And we're going to place them so they are right sides together. Okay. 
line up all your edges. Clip it all the way around. All my injuries are making me be ambidextrous. I'm normally right dominant. I have to sew with my left foot. Now I'm doing as much as I can with my left hand because I can't really use my right hand as much. So it's kind of nice. So you're going to leave a turning hole in the bottom here but you need to sew all the way around all the edges leaving that turning hole and what I like to do is sew up off the edge come across get to the corner sew up across back down then when I get back down to the other side where I'm going to leave my opening I sew off the edge of the fabric so I pivot off the edge and I'll so show you so right now I'm starting off the edge of the fabric so I'm going to make sure I backstitch and here what I'm doing is just checking to make sure that I'm going to have an accurate seam allowance. If it's not going to be accurate, I turn my fabric again and then I'll take another stitch until I get to the correct seam allowance. And I always like to backstitch in these little corners as well. Any corners I like to backstitch in. I just find when we're poking out corners, it just gives me a nicer corner. I don't worry about accidentally pushing through to the fabric to the other side of the fabric or punching a hole of the fabric <clears throat> and I'll show you what I mean so you see how it comes up off the edge of the fabric so I come down on the fabric and then I go all the way around and when I get back over here I come back up off the edge of the fabric and back stitch now we need to trim the corners be careful not to clip your stitches And then we're going to turn this right sides out. So press everything right sides out. Poke at all your corners. I like to run my turning tool along the seams as well. Just helps press those seams a bit. And because we stitched off the edge of the fabric, you'll notice your fabric is wanting to turn under where those stitches are. And it makes it for a nice pressed seam and it makes it easier to press that seam as well because the fabric is naturally wanting to turn in. So I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press it and then we'll come back and we will continue on with attaching this to our bag and then sewing our bag. I've given my slip pocket a good press. Now we're going to top stitch across the top edge of the pocket. So not the edge that we have the opening at, the opposite edge, so the folded edge. So I'm going to top stitch this. And Buddy has decided to join us. just trimming my threads right now so there we go I've top stitched across that edge oops top stitched across that edge now we need to take the slip pocket and we need to place it centered onto the lining panel so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press it so it's going to be centered but there's also a measurement given in the pattern for how far down from the top of the lining panel. So I'm just pressing this first and I'm going to grab my lining panel and I've marked what 
pattern piece this is for so I marked an SP for slip pocket so that I would know what this measurement that was on this bed on this lining piece here was used for I'm just picking off threads so I've marked the center but to get the center of your lining panel what you do is just fold these side edges in together and then press with your hand so once you have it pressed you can do the same thing for the slip pocket so as I was doing when I first finished top stitching just a moment ago and we're going to place this so again there's a mark down from the top that you need to make so I've already gone ahead and done that and then we're going to line these up so line up the top edge of your slip pocket with that mark that you made and you're going to line up the center marks as well so get everything all nicely lined up just like that so top edge of my slip pocket is on that mark that I made you're not making this easy you don't care so I'm going to pin this in place Now you're really in the way. Nobody can see when you're in the way. Nobody can see. So, I'm just gonna move you over. Once you have it pinned, it will look like this. So again, from the top edge down is where the top edge of your slip pocket will be and it is centered on your panel. So I'm going to sew around the three edges, so down the side, across the bottom, and back up the top. Back stitch well at the tops because those do get a lot of stress, so that can easily come undone. So you want to make sure you back stitch well at the top. And my thread, there we go, is trying to break free. So here I am at the top, I'm just back stitching well. And when I stitch a pocket on, even though it's top stitching the pocket on, I use my regular stitch length just because I don't want the pocket to have a bigger stitch length. I want it to be more secure onto the lining panel or the panel that I'm attaching it to. Yeah, I see you eyeing those. I'm going to close them before you try to steal them. So now I'm going to cut my threads and I'm going to cut these two little frayed pieces here. And that's how your pocket should look when you are done. And if you really wanted to, you could sew up the center to make it more of a divided slip pocket. That's that's a personal choice if you want. I'm going to leave it as per the instructions. Next, we're going to make our interior zipper pocket. Oops. And we're going to need, I'm just trying to grab everything, our interior zipper pocket zipper, and we will need the remaining lining piece as well. So with your interior zipper pocket piece, this piece here that's nice and long, you're going to measure and make marks. So you're going to measure from the top down and you're going to create a rectangle, yes, shake a paw, good girl. You're going to create a rectangular box using the measurements given in the pattern. And again, pay attention to what the size is for your box because depending on the size of bag, again, the size of box will be different. So again, you're going to measure from the top down and then draw that rectangular box. I'm going to fold this in half because we need to now place this onto our lining panel. So there's the zipper pocket and then the lining panel. So again, same thing, fold it in half, line up your side edges. And then we're going to place the zipper pocket so that it is wrong sides up. So the zipper pocket is going to be right sides together with the right side of the lining panel. And we're going to center it. 
So the top of your zipper pocket is where the zipper pocket box is that you made. That will become your zipper opening. So you want to place that so it's at the top. So the line down from the top is where you're measuring. So again, from the top down on your lining, then we're going to take our zipper pocket panel piece, the interior zipper pocket, and place it the top edge at that line and centered. So lining up the center line. So the top edge is at that line I made here and I'm lining up the centers. Get your clip, your pins out, pin it in place. She's wondering why I get to play with these and she doesn't. Now we're going to stitch around this entire box and I like to use a slightly shorter stitch length than the length I use for stitching a bag together. So stitch all around the box and make sure when you get to these corners that you get right into the corner and when you get there if you're worried about getting angled stitches what I do is stop in the corner, reduce my stitch length to zero, I take a stitch then I return my stitch length back to the length I would stitch with and I continue until I get to the next corner and that just helps prevent those angled stitches. Scare you? Okay. So I'm coming up to that first corner so I'm going to reduce my stitch length, take a stitch, return my stitch length back to the length I was using for stitching, and stitch until I get to the other corner. And she's gone, eh? You even? So I'm just removing my pins because I don't need them anymore and I don't want to get poked. So, turning again, continue stitching until I get to the next corner. Took that extra stitch, and now I'm back where I started. And I back stitched. Now, what you will do is you will draw two E's in the corners, just like this. So I'm just using my pencil very lightly. You'll draw two V's in a V in each corner, just like that. And then what we'll do is we'll rip all the way till we get to the tip of the V, and then we'll cut into the V's. So I like to do this starting with my seam ripper. And then I use my scissors the rest of the way. Be careful not to clip your stitches. If you do, not to worry. What you can do is, I'll just show you as soon as I'm done cutting this. What you can do if you've clipped your stitches in the corner is come up and back stitch up here Go all the way back down around the corner and back stitch again and that'll help lock in those stitches that you've accidentally cut but it'll help re-stitch that corner so that it doesn't come undone. Next we need to take this and we need to push it through the opening. So I'm just pressing. It's not as good as I would usually get it but so what I'm going to do is take this to my iron and I'm going to press this. Once I have it pressed, I will push this pocket through to the wrong side, just like that. 
and then I will give this a really good press and I'll do the same thing I've done before where I'll spray it with a bit of water and then that'll help it press really nice and just be careful not to get these puckers here if you're finding you're getting puckers you may need to snip just a little bit more into your corners so that you can get really nice corners so I'm going to go and press this through and then I'll come back and we will continue with making our bag once we have our pocket pushed through the pocket lining piece pushed through we need to then add our zipper so grab your zipper pocket zipper and some double-sided tape now if you don't have double-sided tape you can use a washable glue stick here what you'll do is you'll apply the glue stick to the edges of the zipper tape where we put the double-sided tape then you'll place it and you'll take it over to your iron and you'll press it with your iron to help dry the glue if you don't want to use your iron because you're using say a non-fraying material or something that can't be pressed with an iron you can just put something heavy on top of it temporarily to let it dry and that'll help hold it in place and I just buy my little washable glue sticks from the dollar store Back, eh? She can't stay away for long. Thank you. Yes, thank you. So once you have the double sided tape placed on the long edges of your zipper. We're going to remove the paper backings and you want to center this zipper in that zipper pocket, shake a paw, good girl, in that zipper pocket opening. And what I like to do is just sort of maneuver it so that my zipper pull is not in the way and getting stuck. And then I flip it over and I'll make any adjustments that I need so that the zipper tape is centered in the zipper pocket opening. Another thing I like to do, if I can find my pins, is I like to pin this in place. Yes, I know. I'm just putting some pins in down here at the bottom or some clips and what that does is it prevents the end of my zipper pocket here from <laughs> sorry buddy yes it prevents the end of my zipper pocket from getting up underneath my zipper tape here when I'm sewing so now we're going to sew around this box where we've placed our zipper so you're going to sew all around this box here And if you don't want back stitching at the beginning or even at the end, what you can do is leave long thread tails when you start, stitch all the way around the zipper opening, and then when you get back to where you started, stop in the hole you started in, and then leave long tails again, cut them, and then you'll tie them off. So you'll pull them through and tie them off in the back. And that way there, there will be no back stitching at all on the front side of your zipper pocket. And you can do this anywhere there is a zipper pocket or anywhere that you don't want any back stitching on your bag. I must admit when it comes to a zipper pocket inside the lining of a bag, I'm not always really concerned about some back stitching seeing because it is inside a bag. It's not as noticeable as say on the exterior of a bag and my double-sided tape is not really holding this very well right now 
So when you're approaching your zipper pull, if you've noticed, I keep zipping mine out of the way. That's just so I don't hit it because mine is, oops, mine is dangly and I don't want to run it over. I kind of went a little wonky there, but that's okay. It's not as easy controlling the fabric when my hand can't be used right. So I'm just trimming my threads. Now we're going to remove these clips that we placed at the bottom. Remove the clips that you placed at the bottom and we're going to flip the panel over. Oh, I didn't see them, but now I see them. Flip the panel over and we're going to take the bottom of the zipper pocket and bring it up to the top edge. We're going to line that up. Line up the top edge, then we'll line up the side edges, and we will sew the top and side edges using the seam allowance given in the pattern. <clears throat> so now I'm going to Sew down the side, or sorry, sew up the side, across the top opening here, and then back down the other side using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And make sure you're folding your lining main out of the way so you do not stitch over it. You don't want to stitch over that lining. And if you find that it is difficult to get past that zipper because there's just enough room there, you can use a zipper foot. That'll really help you get nice and close on the side without sewing over your lining. going to move my pull out of the way because it does cause a bit of a bump there. So now we have our zipper pocket all installed. Now we need to flip this back over and we're going to cut the bottom edge of the pocket. And to do that, what I do is grab my seam ripper and on this one edge, I didn't quite go all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to place my seam ripper in. And I'm just going to cut the fabric. And again, I didn't go all the way to the bottom here with this when I started stitching. So I'm just creating a hole to be able to get my scissors in there. Be very careful with this. And you're just cutting this open and the reason for this is later we will be turning the bag right sides out, I can't get in there, right sides out through this opening that we've created. So I've made the little hole, now I'm just going to cut along the whole bottom edge here where it's folded, so keep it folded. And if you do snip those stitches on the edges, don't worry, you can just go back over and stitch over them so that it'll lock them back in. So now I've got my zipper pocket open on the bottom so I can turn my bag right sides out through my zipper pocket when we get to that step. Now, on the back sides of your lining panels, again, like we did for the exterior, there's some marks that you need to make from the bottom corner up and from the bottom corner towards the center. Then you'll draw a diagonal line to connect those two together. Once you've done that, take your exterior 
front main panel and that's the panel that has your pocket on it and as well as your little um, label if you've decided to add one. For this step we need to find the center of our zipper and to do that what you do is just fold the zipper in half so line up the two short edges fold it in half give it a little press and that creates a little crease and then we can, within the seam allowance, just draw a little mark for where the center point is. And if you want to make sure, do a double check just to make sure, you can always take this to your ruler, which is what I'm doing here, and I've got it at my ruler, and I'm just measuring to make sure that that is the center mark. And. So one side's just off slightly, so I'm just going to move the mark over just a little bit. There we go. Just like that. So now you're going to take your zipper, and we need one of the lining panels. So you can decide which one you want at the front and which one you want at the back. I'm going to make so that my one with my slip pocket is also going to be on the front of the bag. So you're going to take this, and you're going to place the exterior panel right sides up. You're going to place the zipper right sides down. So your zipper end, the one with the end here, with the raw edge material, is going to be on the right side. You're going to center this on your main panel and then baste it together. And really, you could have your zipper face any direction you want. Personally, I would normally have this flipped. I would have this flipped because when I wear my bag, I like my zipper to be closing towards the left because I keep it on my shoulder. I don't like taking it off. So I like to have my, my zipper not closing to the left, closing to the right, so the front of me. So this would be the front of the bag, which would stick out, and I'd wear it on my shoulder, and I'd want it to be closing over here. So that's just a personal preference. Make sure your D-rings are out of the way when you're basting this in place. just going to now slide my zipper all the way out of the way and if you really wanted you could also use some double-sided tape here that would hold your zipper in place now we're going to take the lining and we're going to place it as well on top centered as well so place it on top you're going to create a zipper sandwich so the lining is right sides together with the wrong side of the zipper so your exterior and linings are pretty sides touching so line everything up clip it all the way across And then you will sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. Again, make sure those D-rings are out of the way so you do not hit them. And you may find it helpful to use a zipper foot here, which I think I will switch out to my zipper foot because with the D-ring there, it's kind of getting in my way. All right, this should make it so that I can get right by that D-ring with no issues and the connector. That's 
helping me keep a nice accurate seam allowance. I'm going to zip my zipper closed so I don't have to worry about it now. Now coming back across to where this other D-ring is, so I'm going to just pull it out of the way. Trim your threads. We're going to flip it so that they are now wrong sides together and then we will go and give this a press. So I'm going to go to my iron. However, we need to be very careful when we're pressing so that we don't hit where the raw edge material is here. So I'm going to press just up to there and then I will press the rest of the way. So I'll come back once I'm done pressing and we will top stitch this. Now that it's pressed, we're ready to top stitch across this top edge. I also like to add some clips along the bottom just to help hold everything in place. <clears throat> so just keep your D-ring out of the way so you don't hit it. zipper pull is dangly so I'm also keeping that out of the way. to repeat all those steps to attach the second exterior to the zipper. So again, with your exterior back right sides up, lay your exterior with the zipper already attached, so the zipper center mark with the center on the exterior panel. Another thing you might want to check is that your edges do line up. So that these side edges also line up. If you have to shift anything, now is the time to do it. Good. Clip it in place and then we're going to baste, baste this across the whole edge of the zipper. You could still use your top stitch length, that's okay, you're just basting it, it's just holding it in place until we sew that lining to it. Now I'm going to be approaching the zipper, so I want to move it out of the way, or approaching the zipper pull, sorry. our lining and I think mine shift mine did shift on me just a little bit so I'm going to undo that because mine did shift on me it seems like it's off again from up here I can tell that my distance and sometimes that happens even with pinning I think I'm going to use some double-sided tape this time the weight from the first panels with the two panels and the zipper on kind of gives it a bit of weight and sort of shifts it and I'm trying to be careful not to rip my zipper because I would cry. Because that would mean unpicking everything I've already done and restitching it. I'm at a mark here where I can't go any further. So I'm just unpicking this and recentering it just because it wasn't staying totally centered when I stitched it in place. Sometimes these things happen. So 
I'm just removing all the threads that I unpicked just because I don't want them to poke through later. So I'm going to use some double-sided tape this time to stick it down so that it doesn't shift on me at all while I'm sewing because it will be stuck in place. So I'm going to place some double-sided tape on the right side of the zipper. Remove the paper backing, grab my back exterior, and we're going to get this all centered, lined up and centered on my panel. That's much better. You can already tell here on this edge it's the same distance on this edge as this edge, and what happened was it shifted over towards this edge more. And you could do the same thing I do with the other panel when I stitched halfway and then went back. You could do that if you want, stitch halfway across, start in the middle, and stitch all the way to the ends. That'll help prevent the shifting on you too. Again, no double-sided tape. Use a little bit of glue here for this part. Go. much better now I'm much happier with that now we're going to place the lining panel directly on top again so lining panel will be right sides down so you're seeing the wrong side of your lining panel and it's going with the right side of the lining against the wrong side of the zipper so pretty side of the lining panel is touching the pretty side of the back panel so we've created this little sandwich with the other lining and exterior attached in the middle. So now I'm going to sew across this edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And again, be careful when you're stitching by those D-rings so that they don't slip up underneath. And also be careful when you're stitching by your zipper pull. Don't forget to use your stitch length you use for constructing a bag when you're sewing this seam because this is a structural seam and you want to have your stitch length for structural seams. So now I'm just going to move the zipper pull right out of the way so I don't have to worry about it because I've stitched far enough along. your threads and then we're going to go give this a press just like we did with the previous side give this a press again being careful over here in this area where the um, zipper tab is so that you don't accidentally uh, iron over your zipper tab and burn your zipper tab so I'm going to go do that then we will come back and we will top stitch this and then finish constructing our bag now we're going to top stitch this edge that we just attached to our zipper. So increase your stitch length to the length you like to use for top stitching. And we're going to top stitch straight across that edge. just so I don't have to worry about it as I get to there. And again, my thread nested on the back here, but that's okay. I just pulled it out and trimmed it. Now we're going to unclip it. If you have it clipped like I do, unclip the bottoms because we need to place the lining and exteriors right sides together. So make sure your zipper pocket zipper is open. Place your exteriors right sides together. So line up those side edges and the centers. You 
and it all the way across. Also pay special attention to where your accent pieces are so that those edges line up as well. You want everything to line up. And do that on the side edges here as well. When you clip on the side edges, make sure those side accent pieces line up. Get everything all nicely lined up. And if you need, you can actually use a pin there. Once you do that, You'll line up these top edges here as well. So turn it so that the top stitch edge goes in towards, so just like that, towards my lining. And I'm lining up those top edges, so the exterior top edges where they were top stitched, I'm lining those up and I'm placing a clip there as well. And then clip it the rest of the way. Pay special attention to all those edges. Make sure your D-rings are pointing in towards the bag. So it's just making sure all those edges are lined up that I mentioned so that you get a nice bag. Everything's all nice and neat when you are finished and everything's all nicely lined up. Now we're going to pin the lining and when we sew this we start on the exterior we go all the way down the side across the bottom back up the other side when we come onto the lining our stitch length or seam allowance sorry changes so you need to pay attention to that in the pattern and we come back over here and we're leaving an opening in the bottom so you may want to mark that now if you are thinking you may forget to leave that little opening in the bottom you can mark it right now with your marking tool where you want to leave that opening and do the same thing as we did with the slip pocket where you stitch off the edge of the fabric and on both ends so stitch up off the edge of the fabric come around stitch off off the edge of the fabric and come around or if you're coming up to that stitch pivot and then stitch off the fabric So I have my whole bag clipped together. That took a little bit longer than I would normally take. So I'm going to start up here on the exterior and I'm going to stitch all around the entire edge of the bag. And I'm going to reach in and just move my exterior zipper out of the way as well so I don't hit it when I'm stitching. So I've just moved it out of the way. And you may find it helpful to use a zipper foot here. If you find it better to use a zipper foot, switch out to that now. And I'm really back stitching there and I'm going to back stitch as well over top of my strap connector just to really ensure that it's held in place, nice and secure. Now I'm coming up to where that accent piece is. I'm not going to remove my clip until my presser foot touches it and that just ensures that nothing shifts on me or if it does shift it's a very small amount pivoting checking my seam allowance so again where that little clip is i'm not removing it until my presser foot touches it Keep stitching all the way across. It's like what Dory says in Finding Nemo instead of keep on swimming, it's keep on stitching. All the way around. Now I'm coming back up to where my lining is and this is where we need to pay attention because remember the stitch length changes when we're stitching across our lining. So now I'm going to veer into that seam allowance. And I'm just pivoting to 
check that my seam allowance is, oops, the seam allowance when I pivot here at this corner. Now, when I get to here, this is where I want to pivot and stitch off my fabric. So I back stitched there just for some extra security and now I'm back stitching here. So again, I came off my fabric. Now I'm going to flip over this way and start at the top here rather than starting at the bottom. I'm going to start at the top right where I started previously and then I can veer into that seam allowance and by veer I'm just moving it so it goes into the seam allowance. Moving that zipper pocket out of the way as well. And stitch off the edge of the fabric. Now, we need to take care of these little areas that we drew those lines on. So what you're going to do is you're going to sew across all these four diagonal lines and then you'll sew a second line of stitching within the stitch line, so within the seam allowance, on the other side. So about a sixteenth of an inch away from your first stitching. And if you're worried about your stitching on the side coming undone, what you can do is start up here, just a bit behind the stitching, back stitch over those stitches, and then come down and stitch across the diagonal line, and then come back to where your stitching was for sewing the exteriors together, and back stitch on that stitching as well. And that'll just help lock in those stitches so we don't end up with your bag coming apart. And I'm also back stitching here when I get to these corners to really help hold them in place. So now I'm going to stitch that second row of stitching just under it. And that's just for extra security. Again, stitching, back stitching over previous stitches, and that just helps lock them in place so they won't come undone when we cut into this after. And if you didn't back stitch over your zipper tabs, I forgot to on this one, now is the time to also do that. is doing is locking in the previous stitches so that they don't come unravel when we cut this piece off. right beside it. Now we need to trim these areas. So trim the diagonal lines at the bottom so that they come off. So you end up with these little triangles and you can take this to your ruler and rotary cutter as well and use that. And you'll notice I'm not super concerned about any threads on the inside of my bag. Those aren't going to poke out now because the bag is constructed. This is really hard. That's not easy. So I've trimmed those corners, now we're going to berth the bag through the opening 
in the lining. So reach in. You'll want to unzip that zipper because I can feel it here and it's easy to unzip. Go all the way to the bottom and grab the bottom of the exterior and then bring it up with your hand. And I'm just pushing the bag out. I'm going to push out these little corners here. And if you feel that you need to trim more of the seam allowance, which I feel I need to, so I'm going to just poke these out and where these corners are, I'm going to trim it. All right, this is not easy. I'm just going to pull out the bottom of the bag, just like that, and I'm just going to trim these corners. Just on an angle, just so that there's not so much bulk on the corner there. trimmed. Now I'm going to throw these out and I'll pull this back through again. I'm going to push my corners out as I was mentioning previously. So get all those corners pushed out at the bottom. What's nice is the top stitching is already done because we did it when we did the top stitching of the zipper. So I'm just using my turning tool to push these out. Just being careful when you're pushing on the seams because you really don't want those to push through too hard. pushing it out. And what's nice is because we paid special attention to where these seams are, the edges of the accent pieces, because we paid attention to that, they all line up on the sides and on the bottom. So it looks really nice how it lines up. It looks like one continuous piece where it lines up. So see on the side edges, I don't know, I'm trying to see the camera, how it lines up here. It just looks really nice that it all lines up together. So I'm just pushing out all my corners, pushing out everything here. Turn out your end here where your zipper tab is, push that out. Now, this is where you get to see what the bag looks like before I continue on. I always like to tuck it in, check everything. Such a pretty little bag. Great crossbody bag for if you travel and you just want to have a bag that you can slip like a water bottle into or maybe your, your device, so your e-reader or your tablet or whatever because it's nice and flat so it'll go flat into your luggage which is great good for traveling or you know if you go out walking a lot having what you need with you so now we need to close this opening in the bottom 
And to do that, you'll reach in through the zipper pocket here. So remember we left the opening in the zipper pocket. So we're going to reach in through the zipper pocket, grab the bottom of the bag and pull the bottom of the bag through the zipper pocket so we see it. Then we'll stitch across the bottom here using the same seam allowance we used when we stitched the bag together. So just starting right where we stopped stitching and go all the way across. Now you can push the bottom, now that it's sewn, back into the bag. So push that, oops, not into the lining opening. I'm going to close my zipper pocket here because I just tried to push it into the pocket. So reach in with your hands and smooth out everything out. Now we need to close that pocket opening as well. So we're going to pull the pocket out. And you will fold the zipper pocket under. And if you didn't have your zipper pocket open at that point and you had closed it and you want to do this method, all you need to do is just seam rip that bottom edge of your pocket to open it back up again. And because the way we sewed, we didn't sew over our zipper tab, so your zipper tab should come out right out like this. It should not be stuck in your side seam. So see how mine comes out? Just trying to, here I'll move the light a bit. So see how mine comes out? That's what you want. And I just probably need to refocus my camera because it'll go all wonky on me now that I've done that. So now what I'm going to do is turn this edge under and I just sort of eyeball it and you can take this to your iron and give it a press if you prefer. I'm just going to run it on the edge of my table just like that, kind of just creates a little crease. I'm going to add some clips and then my stomach's growling, it must be lunchtime. What we will do is we will stitch this closed. So we'll stitch that entire edge closed and you can machine stitch this or hand stitch it closed if you want. I'm just going to machine stitch it because it is inside the pocket of a bag. You're not going to see it as much, especially once you get everything into your pocket. Push the pocket back into your bag. Flatten everything out. Now all that's left to do is get our strap made. So you want to add your hardware to your strap. So what you need to do is get your swivel hooks and your slider. And again, I made my strap and I will post that link below in the description so that you can make your strap if you prefer. What you need to do is take one of the loose ends or short ends of the strap and feed it up through the slider. So between the first bar and the middle bar. Then bring it back down over the middle bar and clip it in place. And I'm going to use some rivets. Oh, I can't do that. I'm going to use some rivets to hold this in place. However, if you don't have rivets or Chicago screws, what you can do is sew across, up the side edge, across under as close to the hardware as you can, back down the other side edge, and then you can make an X inside that box. 
Now I'm going to place it so that the lining side of my strap, and I know the lining side of my strap, what one it is, because I used the coordinating fabric for the lining of my strap, but that could also be the outside of your strap if you want. So my slider is facing up. I'm going to feed one of my swivel hooks through the strap so the strap is going through the ring on the swivel hook and the swivel hook is against the table I'm going to then bring the strap again up and slide it between the first bar and the middle bar and then again back down so it goes over the middle bar just like this so the middle bar is here in the center and my strap is going back over it so it looks like this so you have the first one that you've attached already there and then the other side of the strap coming up over lay this again so that the lining side is up but now your slider is against the table swivel hook against the table slide the slide the strap through the ring on the slider and clip it in place i'm going to go add some rivets to this strap and I might see if I can squeeze some rivets here as well because I think that would look really pretty. I don't think I will. I don't think there's enough room. So I'm going to go put some rivets on my strap and then I'll come back and I will show you how it all looks. Now that I've installed the rivets or you may have chosen to sew your strap to your hardware, all you need to do is clip it to your bag. And the nice thing about this strap, you can wear it as a shoulder bag or wear it cross body. So now you're ready to take your summer's crossbody bag out and show it off to the world. But before you do, don't forget to take some photos and share them with us on social media and use the hashtags that are given in the pattern so that we can easily find your summer's crossbody bags and ooh and awe at them with you. I really do hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up some tips and tricks along the way. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you for sewing with me. Bye.